So let me ask you this, which is more persuasive when a company or brand says, hey, we are super awesome and you should buy from us? Or when someone who isn't affiliated with the brand says, you know what, these guys are really great. You should check out their products and services because I've had such a great experience with them. It's the second one, of course, right? It's why we read and share Amazon reviews. It's why TikTokers can make authors like Colleen Hoover go on to the best-selling charts. We care about the experiences people have with products and services, and we wanna know about these experiences before we buy. And the better the experiences that we hear about, the more likely we will buy, because also, as humans, we have this thing called fear of missing out. So this all brings me to the subject of today's video, which is social proof, because everything I just talked about is an example of social proof. But you might be thinking, okay, what the heck is that? And how do I do it? And how do I make it happen for my company or for my client's company? Well, I'm gonna get into it in this video. Hey everyone, I am Robin the Copy Bitch. I've been a freelance copywriter since 2002, and today we are going to talk about social proof. If you are a copywriter or a marketer or a small business owner, this video is for you because you need to be very thoughtful and mindful about how you use social proof in different digital marketing channels, and I'm gonna get into that. But first, let's give a formal definition of what social proof is. So social proof or informational social influence is a psychological and social phenomenon wherein people copy the actions of others in choosing how to behave in a given situation. The term was coined by Robert Caldini, hopefully I'm pronoun pronouncing his name correctly, in his 1984 book, Influence, Science, and Practice. Okay, and that's kind of like a big mouthful for simply saying, you know what, we care what other people are doing and we want sometimes want in on what they're doing, especially if they're having a good experience. And if we're having a hard time making a decision, we also care what other people are doing because that can help us feel more confident in the decision we're about to make, whether it's buying a car or working with a landscaper or getting someone to style our hair or buying a cute little sloth like that. We pay attention to these social cues, reviews, trust signals to help us decide and to reinforce that we are making good decisions. And even though the concept social proof might be new to you, it's been around for a long time. And if you are of a certain age, and I mean someone like me who's in her 50s and grew up during the 80s, you likely remember this little gem of a commercial. This is an example of social proof. Five dentists surveyed recommend sugarless gum for their patients who chew gum. With Trident Sugarless Gum, I've got the best of both worlds. Four out of five dentists, and big joke was, well, what about that fifth dentist? What did he think or she think? So that's an example of social proof in action where you have the stamp of approval from a dentist, what more could you want? And then you have the person reinforcing it during the commercial. Now, whether that person was a real Trident chewer or not, I don't know, but that's the concept of social proof. So it's been around for a long time, but now we live in the digital marketing age and we have to think about it and think about how we're going to use it. Hey, can I ask a favor before we move on? If you're getting any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up because that helps us out. Okay, now let's get back to it. And in case you're thinking, oh, come on, social proof doesn't really matter all that much. Do people really pay attention to reviews? The answer is yes, they do. Just check out these stats. 92% of consumers feel hesitant to buy when there are no customer reviews available. 88% of Gen Zs and Millennials use social media to research products they're interested in buying, and 87% of consumers would not consider a business if it had less than a three-star average rating. Bottom line, social proof matters. So if you are a copywriter, a marketer, a small business owner, you're probably thinking, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to think about? when using social proof on different digital marketing assets? Well, here are some guidelines. So first of all, let's talk about different types of social proof. I've been talking about reviews because I think that's the thing that most people think about when they think about you know, social proof and they understand the concept. And reviews are a big part. You just think about the Amazon reviews you encounter, Yelp reviews, Google reviews. You have probably been prodded as a consumer to leave a review. If you've ever bought anything off of Amazon, I guarantee you probably received an email, whether you responded to it or not is a different story, that said, hey, rate your 
you know, product, service, interaction on the Amazon marketplace. That's an example of a review and people do leave reviews and it doesn't necessarily need to be just words. People sometimes leave video reviews too, which can be extremely helpful when you're trying to buy a product. If you go to Amazon and check out any products that you recently bought, I can almost guarantee you if you scroll down long enough, you'll find someone leaving a video review. Maybe they're showing you how the lipstick looks on their skin or how the veggie chopper dices and slices their red onions. So you'll see reviews in text format and video format. But other types of social proof exist. You can have what we call trust signals like visuals. So a lot of times, and this is especially true on business to business sites, but also on business to consumer sites, you'll see logos. So the company might say, hey, we've worked with these popular brands that you might recognize and you'll see a string of logos go by. And again, the whole point is to get you to go, hey, wait a minute, I want to I want to be along with this group. I want to be part of you know, the people who are using this brand, especially if there's a logo in there that you recognize and you respect. So that's another example of social proof. Other forms of social proof could be awards or accolades. So if your company or your client's company received an award, that's a great trust signal because it shows that, hey, these guys know what they're doing and I want to work with the company that's just been voted best of or that just received this award because it helps me separate out the competition and just focus on the winners because that's the other thing we humans want. We don't want complicated decisions. We want a reason to get rid of contenders and focus on the real elite contenders who we want to choose from. So awards and accolades can be a form of social proof. Another form of social proof could be things like certifications and badges. So if someone in your company just took a HubSpot certification, for example, you get a little badge from HubSpot, you can put that on your your profile, your LinkedIn profile, and it's again, it's a trust signal saying, hey, this person actually knows what they're talking about. They have this certification. And you know, our bona fides and education, our doctorates and certifications, certifications and certifications and licenses all go towards being a form of social proof in those trust signals. So just making sure when you have a website and you have an about page with maybe team members, you post their accolades, you post their credentials, you make sure it's very clear if they have any awards or badges or things like that, because all of those things add up and form social proof. So this brings us to how we should use social proof. And probably the biggest place to use it is the company website. Now, in the old days of 10, 15, 20 years ago, oftentimes you'd find a page of testimonials. This was especially true on a business to business site. And I think if you go to my website, you will actually see that I have a page of testimonials. But I recommend instead of having just a standalone page that you sprinkle testimonials throughout different pages of your site because you never know First of all, what pages people are going to enter on and not everyone's going to go to that big long page of just where people are talking how about how awesome you are. They want to see it in context. So the nice thing about websites today is there are plugins that will actually draw the reviews from various review sites, whether it's your Google business page or Trustpilot or Amazon or things like that. You probably have encountered this on consumer brands. Like here's an example from Glossier, the type of perfume. And if you scroll down after the product, you will see the most recent reviews, which is great because you're seeing the good and the bad too. I think probably there are ways to filter out the real negative ones. I don't know enough about all the different types of plugins that exist, but the goal of course is to have positive reviews, but you also need to keep in mind that people are skeptical if all you have are positive reviews because we know that sometimes there are people out there who manipulate reviews and they're called sock puppets and they've been paid to like just leave good reviews. We want to see a mix of the good, the bad, and the ugly. That stat I shared earlier showed that people aren't necessarily going to work with people who have something below like a three star review, but that gives you some wiggle room. That gives you wiggle room to have an occasional stinker of a review that might be legit and then also to have some really great reviews. So, and I talk about you meaning like you as a copywriter working on behalf of your client or you as a business owner or you as a marketer in charge of the whole marketing team for your client or your client company. So keep that in mind as I talk about this. That's what I, that's where I'm coming from. Other places you can use social proof. You can pretty much use it anywhere you interact with potential customers or your current customers. So think of the email workflows that you send out, having you know, a link to reviews or maybe showing a current you know, five-star review, that's a good thing to do. I've seen it used effectively on direct mailers. So here's an example 
that I actually did another video about this. I'll link to it above and they have the five star review right here. So again, they're putting the social proof on the direct mailer. That can be an extremely smart way to use it. Um, basically any sort of interaction you have with a client or a customer can benefit from having that social proof because again, we humans need that prodding. We want to know we're in good company. We want to know that the company that we're about to spend our hard earned dollars with actually is legit and is going to do what it says it's going to do. So these, these trust signals, social proof, it really does matter. And if you are a copywriter, you, it's up to you to bring this up to your client, especially if you're working with a small business owner who maybe is not thinking about these things. You can make the recommendation to, hey, you need a plug-in on the back end of your website so we can draw in some of these you know, great five-star reviews you're getting on various product pages or on the homepage. Or if your client is a business-to-business -business company, you can say, hey, let's, you know, compile a whole bunch of great testimonials and let's sprinkle them throughout their various pages on the site. And that's something you have to remind your clients too, or if you are a small business owner to keep in mind, you need to constantly be asking for reviews. So the nice thing about e-commerce, especially with the built-in email workflows, a lot of times in that final email that goes out saying, hey, your package has been delivered, or there can be a trigger email that comes out a couple days after that, that's where you can say, hey, leave a review if you had a good experience. And that's all automated on the back end, which is great. And like I said, you probably receive these nudges if you've done enough online shopping. But in the business to business world, we have to be a little more proactive, especially if we are a small business and we're just working, you know, like let's say you're a landscaping company and you're just working, you know, with people or maybe you're a background check company and you're not really thinking, you have to be proactive about asking for these reviews from your clients and just get in the habit of doing it because you want to make sure you're constantly having the fresh reviews and you're updating the ones on your site. And if you can add a plug to your site, even better. So keep that in mind, be the rock star to your clients by saying, hey, we need to make sure we got great reviews because we need that social proof. So am I forgetting anything in terms of social proof? Are there other ways that you've used it or that you've seen other companies use it effectively? I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments. And if you got anything out of this video, again, give me a thumbs up because that helps us out. I am Robin the Copy Bitch. That is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And I will see you on the next video. Bye!